What's up guys, Austin from Derailed Coaster is back with another video for you today and today's video is unfortunately a little bittersweet for me. Unfortunately, the topic of today's video has to do with Six Flags, which for anyone who doesn't know, Six Flags Great Adventure is my home park. So why is this an unfortunate video topic? Well, unfortunately, I don't think Six Flags as a company is in a really good spot right now. And I'm going to explain to you all why I feel that way in the video, so let's get right into it. Last Saturday, April 1st, 2023, I believe not only Six Flags Great Adventure, but many of the other Six Flags parks opened for their seasonal operations for the 2023 season. As many of you are probably aware, the quarterly conference calls last year for Six Flags were not good. And for as positive as the quarter four conference call sounded, unfortunately from my experiences at Six Flags Great Adventure opening day, a lot of the negative variables from those conference calls last year were in full swing. Now granted, I'm not saying that Six Flags hasn't done anything great for the parks in the off season. And actually, if you guys would like to check out some of the cool new things that Six Flags has done for Great Adventure specifically, then I highly recommend that you guys go check out my good friend Colin's channel, Hollywood Studios. Colin has really good videos highlighting some of the really great things that Great Adventure has received in the off season. And I will put links to his social media in the description below. So if Great Adventure has received good things in the off season, then what exactly could I be talking about as far as negatives go? So to start that off, I'm going to go over my biggest gripe with the park on opening day. A lot of the major roller coasters in the park were closed. The rides that consisted of these major closures in the park included Nitro, Batman the Ride, King Da Ka, El Toro, Medusa, and Runaway Mine Train. Now those are a lot of very vital rides closed within the park. And personally, in my opinion, I think the greatest hit to the park right now being shut down is Nitro. Nitro is a real general public pleaser and it's very good at eating capacity. And what I mean by this is Nitro is a high capacity ride that seats lots of riders at once. And Nitro is also very known to have great dispatch times. So let's say the park is busy. Nitro is probably going to have a fast moving line and you have the highest chance of getting on the ride and getting on it in a relatively quick time frame. However, for opening day, these points did not matter. And that's due to another reason why I think Six Flags might be in trouble, but we'll get to that reasoning in a little bit. There are two major focal points to why I think that the ride closures is a major problem for the company, and just quickly, I'm going to note that these two points could possibly be related to financial issues. So the first point, and the point that I think is the most likely cause to these rides being shut down, is most likely staffing. All across the country since the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, many businesses have had a hard time recovering from the loss of employment and unfortunately over these past couple of years inflation has also been a huge problem which I believe inflation may be a contributing factor to why a big name company like Six Flags is struggling to get employees. I'm gonna be blunt and I'm gonna get straight down to the point here. I think the biggest problem is I don't think Six Flags is offering enough in wages to interest people to come work for their franchise and as many of you know the cost of living has gone up a lot in the past couple of years. And at the same time, many companies have lost a lot of money due to the pandemic post M pre. Because of this, a lot of businesses have not been able to raise their wages for their employees. And yet the cost of living has still gone up. And I don't think Six Flags is any exception to this. So what it comes down to for me is I think Six Flags needs to raise their wages for their employees to offer more of an incentive for sustainability for their employees. That way people who are looking for jobs don't have to fear as much for their sustainability, Six Flags could potentially offer enough in wages to allow for their employees to feel like they have a secure future working for their company. And I think one of the solutions that Six Flags could go about fixing this issue, and I think a possible solution for this issue could be for Six Flags to cut back on spending where it doesn't really necessarily matter, and focus their spending more on upkeep and keeping the parks nice and tidy. And as much as a lot of park goers may not enjoy having any new experiences 
workers at the park for the next couple of years. This would allow the company as a whole to ensure that they have staffing for all of their rides and attractions, which will ensure that guests have a better experience when they visit the parks and could potentially pull in more revenue over the upcoming years. And in doing so, Six Flags could potentially increase their profit in doing this as well. And I'd also like to note that I've been informed by other people that across the board, Six Flags has had this issue at multiple parks and not just Great Adventure. So the points that I'm currently making right now applies to the chain as a whole and not just Six Flags Great Adventure. And for the second main point as to why I feel like the rides may not have opened on time this year, I suspect that not enough time went into all season maintenance for a lot of the rides. Now whether or not this is a budget issue, I have no idea. However, I have heard some rumors that staffing has also affected off season maintenance. And because of this, many of the Six Flags parks are actually behind on their maintenance schedules for a lot of their rides. Now there's not a whole lot else to elaborate on this point, so I'm going to get into a point that I made before I mention these two main points. So why would I think it's not as important for Nitro to be open on opening day, even though I still feel like it's a huge hit for the park for it to be closed? From what I saw at my experience at Great Adventure on opening day, attendance was really, really low at the park. I can't speak for the rest of the Six Flags parks because I wasn't attending them for their opening days. However, I have heard from multiple people that the same story could be told for other parks as well. One excuse that Great Adventure does have for its opening day lack of attendance though is the weather, as very severe and major storms were forecasted for the region that day. And a tornado did in fact touch down within the proximity of Great Adventure that very day. So sure, that could be a factor in play as to why Great Adventure had low attendance numbers on opening day. However, I have one reason in particular that makes me think this isn't necessarily the case. Days prior to opening day, a media article came out about the closures of some of Six Flags Great Adventure's attractions. And I think this played a very significant role in scaring guests away from the park. Because the article not only mentioned that one of Great Adventure's star attractions, El Toro, would be closed, but it also made mention that the new for 2022 Medusa rebranded from Bizarro, as well as Runaway Mine Train, and a lot of the following areas within those rides, would be closed until at least Memorial Day. Now, I have heard a couple of things as to why Medusa and Runaway Mine Train may perhaps be closed until Memorial Day, but I'm not going to disclose them at this time because I don't have enough evidence or proof to really validate them. So instead of stirring the pot here, we're going to stick to the cold hard facts. Personally, once again, I think these rides closures stem back to staffing. And El Toro is also still undergoing major overhaul procedures in order to get the ride into a safe operational state once again preceding the following accidents over the past couple of years. Overall, for the Six Flags chain, things look to be off to a rocky start for the beginning of the 2023 season. And for that, I believe that the chain as a whole is in a lot of trouble right now, financially especially. And I think a lot of the negative things from the quarterly conference calls from last year are starting to really show themselves at the beginning of this year's season. Granted, we're still very early into the season and a lot of things could change between now and possibly the summertime. However, the reason why I'm confidently making a video on this, even though it's the start of the season, if we go back in time to last year's opening day at Great Adventure, which by the way, I actually have a vlog on my channel from last year's opening day, and following after El Toro's first accident, most of the rides were actually open last year on opening day, and the park was actually pretty busy as well. So with everything being said, like I said, I think there are some solutions that the chain could possibly impose to improve the state of the company. And I fear that if this becomes a trend for the chain as a whole, then we could be seeing a lot worse in terms of the future for Six Flags. So at the end of the video, my true hope is that Six Flags finds a solution for their ongoing problems and hopefully they steer the chain back into the right direction. Salim Basul seemed very optimistic on their quarter four conference call. So for now, I'm going to put my trust into Six Flags and I'm going to hope that they get the company back on the right track. Do you agree with my points? Do you have counter arguments to some of my points? I would love to hear some of your guys' arguments below in the comments. Please, by all means, on whatever you possibly can, correct me on anything that I might have misstated within this video as well. I'd like to formally apologize for having such a bleak outlook on the company at this time. However, I grew up with Great Adventure as my home park, and I hope and wish for nothing but the best for Six Flags, and I really hope that they can get their things situated soon. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. Derailed Coasters, out.